Coming up on MHS One. We say farewell to our beloved assistant principal, Mr. Franks. We pack our bags with Margot Bartson. And we write to some pen pals. And it's all coming up on MHS One. Good morning, McKinney High School. Today is May 9th. I'm Noe Garcia. And I'm Sarah Appleby, and you're watching MHS One. After 10 years as McKinney High's assistant principal, Mr. Franks has decided to retire. Here's McLean Johnson with the story. No principal has been here longer than Mr. Franks, but after this year, he is retiring. I got started at McKinney High School 10 years ago. I was hired here by uh, Donna Roeder, who was the principal then, who has also had been a principal at Scott Johnson Middle School. The thing I miss the most is uh, building relationships with students and teachers, and uh, really more than anything else is uh, seeing students who have siblings that come through and getting to know entire families that way. Really my favorite memory takes place almost every year but when I see the seniors walk into the auditorium to graduate, that is uh, a memory I'll always have. And uh, it's kind of an emotional period for the seniors and for teachers and administrators that have seen kids come through four years at McKinney High School. Mr. Franks has big plans for the future. I plan on uh, doing a lot of fishing and hunting, cooking out, and uh, I might even grow a ponytail. This has been McLean Johnson reporting for MHS One. Our theater program won a very big award recently. Here's Cassidy Carroll with more on Dallas Summer Musicals. The McKinney High School Theater Department competed in the Dallas Summer Musicals High School Musical Competition. Dallas Summer Musicals High School Musical Theater Awards is a regional competition for high school theatrical companies. There are 15 categories that you can be nominated for and we were nominated for 12. There were 50 six schools entered this year. It's the third year it's been in existence and we've been part of it for all three years. The day of the performance, the cast and crew rehearsed and later performed at Dallas Fair Park. There were three schools at least sharing the dressing room that we were in, so it was very crowded. And everybody got dressed in their really nice clothes for the red carpet, and then we promptly had to turn around and change back into our costume for our performance in the first act. Well, rehearsal was kind of insane because like, we have a lot of people to listen to us, and it was a little stressful, but it was really fun Like every time we did it. And then being nominated was amazing because like usually we don't get that much recognition but like it was it was so exciting to just be nominated. It's incredibly gratifying knowing that our whole theater department was poured into this and everyone put so much love and um, time and effort. Overall one of the most amazing experiences that I could hope for in my senior year. It's been a really exciting process not just this year but for the past three years to be a part of this level of competition and to have a nationally recognized organization like Dallas Summer Musicals acknowledge the work that high school musical theater students are doing in this area. I think it's been a lifetime experience that these kids will never ever uh, forget. And then to hear our name called for best, best musical was the, the icing on the cake for the day. So. This has been Cassidy Carroll reporting for MHS One. Can't wait for this weekend, lol. Ow! When did that pole get there? Whatever. Now here's Luke Lauderback with sports. Thanks, Noe. With fall quickly approaching, McKinney High School football is springing into action. Here's Taryn and Aiden with a look at spring football. A new season just recently started for the McKinney High Lions. Spring is, is about giving opportunities to some of the younger players and some of the guys coming back to, uh, to uh, see what they're, where they're at. Uh, I know in the off season we lift a lot of weights, we prepare 
uh, all of off season and in the spring we have a chance to um, work on ourselves. Spring football is where we come out, you know, get some shoulder pads and some helmets on and uh, run through plays, you know, run through the other team. We're going to play against plays, you know, just kind of get our pads on and hit people. Players and coaches enjoy spring football for different reasons. What I enjoy about football is um, getting to hit again, getting to play with all my brothers, getting this feeling back from last year. Uh, spring always makes me excited for next season. I mean, it just shows me what I can do, shows me what the players can do, and shows me what we're going to be able to do against other teams. So I'm really excited. I'm always excited. And we're going to get more wins, and uh, we have more leadership for the squad so we can be ready for this 5A new district. The weather's great. Uh, the guys are always excited to get out on the grass after a long off season of lifting weights. Incoming seniors have special feelings toward their last season. Spring season as a senior is kind of heartbreaking, but at the same time it makes you work that much harder. And that's all you have, so you got to put it all out on the field. This has been Taryn Kennedy and Ada Mulligan reporting for MHS1. Now I know all y'all thought I was a killer freshman year quarterback, but these guys take it to a whole new level. Here's McKinney's own version of Dude Perfect. This is Dude Perfect, MHS1 style. This past weekend, the McKinney lacrosse team played in the state semifinals, but came to a tough loss against Keller at the end. That's all for sports, now back to you. Thanks, Luke. Margot Bartson is a very gifted student who's soon going to be making waves across the Atlantic Ocean. Here's Nick Lindley and Alyssa Delgado with more. Recently, McKinney High School student Margot Bartson received a scholarship to a program that would allow her to learn Russian over the summer. The program is called the National Security Language Initiative for Youth, and it's sponsored by the State Department, and it's focused on languages that are often studied, like not the, I guess, pretty ones, like French or Italian, um, but there's like Korean, Chinese, let's see, Russian, Arabic, Hindi, things like that. And so it's for high school students, and you can apply, and it's a full immersion program, and you're there for pretty much the whole summer. So you're there for seven weeks. The first half, you are going to a college-type place, doing five hours of class a day of just intense learning Russian. You have homework every night. And then the second half, you go live with a Russian family who doesn't speak any English. I found out about this program through Mr. McGowan, and I actually found out the day before it was due, the whole application. So most kids had months to prepare for this. So I had to go home the next day and bang out three essays in four hours, and I almost nearly missed the deadline. So only me and my mom read my essays, so that's why it was really scary. I didn't like, I was competing with kids who were, you know, having their teachers look at this, having everyone look at this, and so that, that was scary about it. 3,500 kids applied to the whole thing, and then 1,300 made it to the next round, which is where you got your interview. And then from there, I don't know the exact numbers, but there's seven countries you can go to, and around 70 or 80 kids go to each one. So it's pretty selective. It's not based on you know GPA and all these numbers and grades, really. It's more, are you willing to jump into a foreign country but not knowing anyone? It's more situational, like if you're brave or <laughs> adventurous, I don't know. But I wanted to learn a language, because in my future I want to work in, foreign, in international relations or um, like with the United Nations, and so I need to master a language that's a world language, and Russian is one of the official languages of the United Nations. I think every day I'll be able to learn something new and see something new, first of all, and I love just, I love learning new things every single day. This has been Alyssa Delgado and Nick Lindley reporting for MHS One. As the year comes to an end, some seniors get the opportunity to participate in a fun tradition of writing letters to fifth grade students. Here's Patrick Duran and Hannah Hornbeck with more on the Pen Pal Picnic. 
For the past nine years, seniors have been offered the opportunity to be a pen pal to a fifth grade student. The seniors write to their pen pal over the period of a month and then get to meet their pen pal at the annual pen pal picnic. We wrote two letters to a pen pal and then they would write back to us, a fifth grader at McNeil. Today we got to meet them and we get to hang out with them, eat lunch with them, and just kind of get to know them a little more. The history of the pen pal picnic program is uh, a few years ago when my daughter was in the fifth grade, we had a senior here that asked if we could start this program up again and he said it was something that he did when he was in fifth grade. So I got in touch with Rebecca's fifth grade teacher, Mr. Parkman, at McNeil. And uh, we talked about it and discussed it and got the logistics all set up and started the Big Pal Picnic Program. And the kids come here to Town Lake and they cook out and have hot dogs and burgers and they have to get time to spend some time with a senior and the senior gets some time to come to the program. Today we are playing sand volleyball. We played Red Rover uh, soccer. We kind of just like walked around Town Lake and talked. This has been Patrick Doran and Hannah Hornbeck reporting for MHS1. I grow an amazing beard, you have a third grade hair, dude. The way you dress is weird and the way you grain ain't fair, dude. I like your smile, it's cute. I bet all the girls love it, my rhymes are stoop. I'll show you how I ride, got two wheels on the whip. I'll brush you off my side, I'm teaching, don't you skip. I saw that jersey on your wall, so you think you can bite? My three-year-old son can go fast on his track. When I finish my rhymes, your confidence breaks. You might be vegan, but at least I have some steak. Maybe I'll add a little A1 steak sauce. So take your veggies and chill them. You say being vegan is boss, but buffalo wings, ooh, kill them. Teaching about people like Conor Mandela. Why you teaching fish about Brazilian favelas? My power notes with maps crush yours. And at least I'm not obsessed with Star Wars. Who won? Who's next? You decide. Epic teacher rap battle. Now it's time for another teacher home invasion. Or should I say, principal home invasion. MHS home in, uh, Oops. Oh. sorry, yeah, <laughs> wrong right. house. Have a good day. Uh, what was that? Hi, McKinney High School, come on in. So welcome to Casa de Ferris, right? Is that how we start? No. Yeah. This is the house we've lived in. This is our eighth year uh, to live here. It's the only house we've lived in in McKinney. So we were very lucky to find this house and it was in a nice neighborhood that we liked with uh, all the things that we needed. And so it's been great. Uh, my wife is Kim Ferris. She is a doctoral student at UNT right now. We met at Howard Payne University where we started school and uh, I guess our second year there together, we started dating and finally got married and she finished and graduated and I wasn't quite graduated yet. So we moved to East Texas and that's what drew us to East Texas. Then I have three children. Lawson is my oldest. He is uh, a junior at UNT. He's a mechanical engineering major and he's a senior now. He's a senior at UNT. Sorry, <clears throat> can't keep track, I guess. Um, and then Zachary Ferris is a proud McKinney High School Lion and he's going to graduate in about three or four weeks. And then Abby is a fourth grader at Minshew. My dog is crazy. Uh, he is a nine-month-old lab and uh, we have 
been intending to work with him. Uh, I like to hunt and, and to fish, and so he is uh, intended to be a retriever and to work with us when we're hunting, but it takes daily training with him, and I think he's uh, a little hard-headed right now. This is uh, a bow, actually, a friend of mine built, so it's kind of got parts from several different bows. And then I have another bow that uh, I hunt with also, so we kind of have two of them. It's called a Robin Hood shot. Got very lucky just shooting targets one day and was able to pierce one arrow with the other. And it's cool to show out, but it cost me about 20 bucks because the two arrows are expensive. <laughs> Right now, I drive what I affectionately call the man van. Man, 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 man van. Man, 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 man van. Van, van. Man van. Hey! Man van. Man van! Man van! As long as I don't get beat up at the boat ramp driving a van, I'm, I'm okay. It, I can fit lots of gear in it and stuff, and it gets me from point A to point B, so. All right, guys, school's out. It's time to go fishing. Y'all gotta go. Thank you for coming. Bye, McKinney. Well, that's all we have for you today. For more news, visit MainStreamNews.com. And remember, if it's news, and it's at McKinney High School, it's, it's MHS1. MHS